Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction. This is a joint work with Serge and Reza, who are both present. So if you want to ask them questions later, you can do it. And uh, what we looked at was uh, authenticated encryption with variable stretch, as the title says. Uh, we already saw some introduction about authenticated encryption in the previous slides, so uh, in the, sorry, in the previous talks. So I'll just quickly skip through the introduction. We saw that authenticated encryption gives us confidentiality and integrity at the same time using a symmetric key. And uh, in this work, we focused on nonce-based authenticated encryption with associated data. And uh, schemes like this have uh, both encryption and decryption algorithms which are deterministic and use a non-repeating initialization vector to achieve semantic security. And they also allow us to process what we call associated data which is uh, just a string that needs to be authenticated but not encrypted. And uh, schemes like this, so uh, this is a quite old notion, but it's very popular because it allows us to construct schemes which are efficient, simple, but secure at the same time. And we have schemes uh, of this type both deployed and competing in the Caesar composition, still in the third round. A small caveat of these schemes is, however, that they are uh, what people these days would call brittle, because uh, if they are not used exactly as they are supposed to be used, we can have the security collapse on us, maybe unexpectedly for a regular user. A most notorious example of such uh, brittle behavior is the nonce misuse. We have studied this problem a lot, and so it's been treated extensively uh, studied in the literature. Another example is the decryption misuse, where a user might release a putative plaintext before it is verified, and this has disastrous cons consequences as well. Uh, another approach we have seen in the literature is to define a very strong notion, which would treat any misuse that we can imagine. But a consequence of this approach is that it's not easy to achieve this security. So maybe we can't have robust AE schemes for all applications. And uh, another type of misuse that we studied in this work uh, in context of nonce-based authenticated encryption is the stretch misuse. Uh, the term stretch simply refers to the number of bits by which we expand the ciphertext compared to the messages. Uh, this quantity has to be non-zero to have meaningful guarantees for authenticity and uh, related to this, uh, a very basic intuition about security of AE schemes is that whenever we expand by tau bits, we expect uh, the adversary to have to do about two to tau forgery attempts before it succeeds. And for all nonce-based authenticated encryption schemes, this ciphertext expansion is considered to be a constant parameter. And uh, this is assumed both in the design and in the security analysis. Uh, and so stretch misuse would be simply the case where a user would use several different values of stretch with the same secret key. Now, a very necessary question before we started uh, this work, we asked ourselves, is it worth investigating this? Like, is this really uh, a valid misuse scenario that can occur? Uh, or is it just yet another A notion to add to the collection? And uh, it is interesting for several reasons. Uh, the users might have incentives to do this. So there are several usage scenarios where it would be very useful and nice to have this, uh, so to speak, sliding scale authenticity, where you don't have to rekey your algorithm, but you can maybe decrease the stretch, save on the bandwidth, and then increase it again when you need uh, bigger authenticity guarantees. When the users decide to do it, there is almost no implementation barrier which would stop them from changing the algorithm because the tag is usually just truncated. And uh, most importantly, there are some attacks. So if 
there is an attacker who has access to several instances of the same algorithm with different values of stretch, uh, the security might not behave intuitively for the users. And uh, in fact, we were not the first ones to have noticed these things. Uh, the first mention of such counterintuitive behavior comes from 2013 from what turned out to be a long discussion on CFRG forum where Manger noticed that if we take OCD algorithm with 128-bit tags and 64-bit tags, what happens if we use it with the same key is that whenever we get an encryption query with 128 bits of tag, truncate this tag and submit it to decryption with the shorter tag version, this will always be a correct forgery. If we look at how OCD works, this is not surprising at all because the tags are simply truncated when they are computed. But this breaks the intuition for the users. And uh, this, this opinion was also voiced in the forum where uh, people have said, well, maybe it would be better if we could avoid such interactions. Uh, consequently, several algorithms in the Caesar competition received heuristic tweaks where the tag length have been mixed into the encryption algorithm by dropping it either into the nonce or associated data but uh, no real analysis was done. And unfortunately, uh, even with these countermeasures in place, most of the schemes will still be vulnerable because most of these schemes that uh, been mentioned on the previous slide follow the paradigm of ciphertext translation. Uh, it might look a bit scary, but what it is really is just a way to take a authenticated encryption scheme which can only process nonce and the message. So we have an encryption algorithm which gives us a stretched ciphertext and we want to authenticate associated data. So what we do, we just compute so a, a feed hash of this associated data of constant length and bits, truncate it to tau bits, XOR it to the end of the ciphertext. This works if the stretch is constant. If not, uh, we can use this nice property where encrypting the same query, which differs only in associated data, gives, uh, well, so we have these two ciphertexts, and when we XOR them, this gives us a truncated difference of the hashes of these two associated data, which depends only on the key and the associated data. And uh, then, if we have an attacker who has access to several instances of this algorithm, using gradually increasing uh, value of stretch, and wants to forge for the longest value of stretch, the adversary can gradually build up this forgery. This is the attack. It's ugly. I won't go into the details. But the bottom line is that the attacker has to first exhaustively search for the first tau bits of this difference. And tau 1 is the shortest value of stretch the attacker can work with. Once we have this, we switch to queries stretched by tau 2 bits, which is the second shortest. Uh, ciphertext expansion value that we have access to. And we just iteratively, exhaustively search for the next bits that we don't know using the bits that we have already learned. And this repeats and repeats until we have to find the last remaining bits that we don't know, tau l minus tau l minus 1, which are two longest values of stretch, and we have our forgery. And what can be counterintuitive for the users is that we only do two to this many queries with the longest value of stretch. And now this is pretty worrying because if this is 128 and this previous one is 96, the co forgery cost is 2 to 32. Uh, and as I promised, this works even with the countermeasures in place. So if the nonce, is, uh, if, uh, if the tau is encoded in nonce, this works for any hash. If it's in associated data, it works for a very frequent type of the hash and uh, this clearly indicates that we'll probably need systematic treatment of the problem. So when we start and uh, we want to formalize security of authenticated encryption with variable stretch, there are some pretty intuitive properties that we would like to see from our new notion. Uh, clearly, there will be some uh, space of possible stretches that our adversary can work with. Uh, what we want is that the previous attacks will be captured in the new notion as valid attacks. 
we want to show, we want to appear like uh, if there are any uh, interactions between different values of stretch, we want these to appear in the advantage. And uh, at the same time, we would like that the security level that will be captured by the new notion can still be achieved by efficient schemes. Nice and efficient, like we know from the basic NOS-based AAB. What is less intuitive is how should we formalize this? Uh, it's not so easy to find an ideal system for the, for the notion. Uh, because the starting point, uh, so what we started from was the security definition for nonce-based AAD uh, from 2002. Well actually, it's a slightly different version, but this is what most of the schemes follow. So we define the security of such a scheme with a security experiment where an adversary who tries to break the A security of our studied scheme is left to interact with two black box oracles. In the real world, these would be the encryption and decryption algorithm initialized with a secret random key. And in the ideal world, uh, these would be replaced by a random bits oracle for the encryption and uh, an oracle which rejects all the forgery attempts. And uh, the adversary is restricted not to repeat nonces in its encryption queries and not to attempt a trivial forgery in its decryption queries. And then we define the advantage of the adversary in breaking the security of the A scheme like this. Importantly, also, in this game, the ciphertext expansion is assumed to be constant. And thanks to this, the game is nice and intuitive. It, it makes uh, a lot of sense uh, to see why things are defined the way they are. But when we try to extend this to the case where there are several values of stretch at the same time, it becomes a bit more complicated. Uh, to see why, uh, try to consider what would be maybe the first intuitive uh, attempt to formalize security with variable stretch. So apparently the adversary has to interact with several instances of the algorithm that are available in parallel. They are using all the possible values of ciphertext expansion uh, from the stretch space. And uh, we restrict the adversary to not repeat nonces which every extra which, uh, with every expansion. But uh, what we do in the ideal world is not so clear. What we could try is to say, well, in the ideal world, we just replace all the encryption oracles with random bits oracles and all the decryption oracles with always reject oracles. But unfortunately, this notion will not capture what we wanted. So if there are some interactions which are maybe useful with the biggest values of stretch, if you want to do forgeries there, we won't see this because there is always a trivial attack on the shortest uh, value of ciphertext expansion. Uh, so this notion doesn't work. For instance, the gradual forgery would not appear as a valid attack in this case because we can't use the decryption oracles. And even if we overcome this problem, there are some other problems which appear on the way. And I will just fast forward to the notion that we have end up with. And this is what we define. So our notion is called NVAE. N comes from nonce-based and V comes from variable text. You get the idea. Uh, but it differs from most of the conventional, uh, conventional notions for authenticated encryption in that it is parametrized. So now our notion takes a parameter, tau c. This tau c is one of the possible values of ciphertext expansion that the adversary can use. And uh, we just say that when we take tau c, it is fixed throughout the security experiment. At the same time, we say that tau c is arbitrary. So we only say take one of the, of the ciphertext ex expansion values that you have, uh, set it as the challenge for the adversary. So the adversary is trying to attack this particular ciphertext expansion value, but it still has access to all the other expansion values. And uh, how we define the security experiment is in the real world, we have all the instances with all the values of ciphertext expansion, which are at the disposal of the adversary. The adversary can ask encryption queries, decryption queries. Uh, it mustn't repeat the nonce 
for the same ciphertext expansion value, but maybe it can be repeated for different values. And we only ask it not to do trivial forgeries for queries expanded by tau c bits, but not for the others. In the ideal world, we leave all the oracles the same. So the instances that are stretched by not tau c bits will be exactly the same as in the real world, only the tau c bit stretched queries will be treated with idealized oracles, with a random bit oracle and always reject oracle. And then we define the advantage in NVAE tau c of the adversary like this. So what does this model capture? Does it capture anything meaningful at all? Uh, the answer is it does. And uh, what we see when we have a proven bound for NVAE tau c is the exact level of security that we guarantee for the queries that are stretched by tau c bits. Uh, to see why, uh, think about the restrictions and the, and the two worlds the adversary has to work with. We didn't restrict the adversary too much for all the other expansion values. It can even do forgeries. It can take the shortest ciphertext expansion that is in the stretch space, it can forge, it will probably be easy, but this doesn't help the adversary to distinguish the two worlds, because this is the same in both worlds. But maybe this will help the adversary to collect some information that will be useful in attacking the target stretch value. And uh, this, the queries to the stretch tau c bits, will be the only thing that can help the adversary to really distinguish the two worlds. At the same time, if we can prove a bound that is independent of a particular value of tau c. So we only assume it's fixed throughout the experiment, but we say, oh, well, it will work like this for any value of tau c. What we will see is that the scheme behaves as expected for every value of stretch. And this is what we wanted to capture in the first place. So how would a good advantage look like if we managed to prove something in the model? So what we would like to see is an advantage which has a these two main components. One component will be this term, which grows linearly or maybe quadratically with the number of decryption queries made with tau c bits of stretch. And this is something that cannot be avoided, right? Because if there are just tau c bits of redundancy after two to tau c queries, you just guess it. But uh, we want that it doesn't uh, decrease much faster than this. And then there would be some other term which probably comes from the construction, but this should not depend on tau c directly or the resources related to tau c. For instance, for a typical block cipher based construction, we would see a birth data bound like this, where sigma is the total amount of data processed with all the values of stretch, because the adversary just learns about the used block cipher. What our model doesn't say is that using short values of ciphertext expansion is okay. Because, well, if you use short tags, you don't get much security. And this will also show in the, in the advantage when you substitute tau c by a small quantity. Uh, when we then look back at the two attacks that I have presented, we see that these are captured as, as valid attacks. For the truncation forgery on OCB, we see that we have uh, constant small resources and advantage equal to one. Because if uh, we focus on tau c, well, so we set tau c to 64 bits, we have access to 128 bit encryption oracle. In the ideal world, we will never forge. In the real world, we will always forge. So we have advantage of one uh, compared to what we would expect here. Uh, or in the gradual forgery, this is a bit more involved, but what we see is that most of the queries or most of the resources are spent on the values of stretch different from tau c. So a user might not suspect that if a lot of activity is spent on the other values of stretch, uh, the, the, the chance to attack the target stretch will be too good. But in fact, we see the advantage is, is one again, compared to what we would expect, which is this. And um, maybe to see what it is exactly, I have this small example. So imagine that we're using an A scheme for which we have 32, 64, 96, and 128 bit tags. And for the value of stretch, so for the 128 bit tags, we only do two to 32 decryption queries. 
So the advantage we would expect from a good scheme in this model would be 2 to minus 96, not 1. And uh, except for defining security with variable stretch, we also show that it is possible to achieve uh, the security in this model. And uh, uh, to help in doing this, we also define an aux auxiliary notion we call KESS. And what this uh, notion captures is a property where an adversary cannot distinguish if it's interacting with many instances of the same scheme with different values of stretch but the same key, or if all these instances are using independent keys. Now, this property alone will not give you a security, but if it's combined with the conventional a security of the scheme, this automatically gives you NVA security. So this is a theorem we prove. And this is pretty useful if you already have a scheme that is working well as an A scheme, for instance, OCV. You already have a well-established proof for its security, and you only want to tweak it to make it secure against variable tags. So maybe you just tweak it, you prove the Kess property, and your analysis is done. And uh, this is what we do to show that uh, our, this type of security can not only be achieved, but when we achieve it, the scheme will still be efficient and fast as we like it. We take OCB and uh, we modify it by putting the tag length in all the tweaks. And when we do this, it's actually very easy to prove the Kess property because uh, OCB is based on tweakable block cipher. So encoding the tag length in the tweaks will just separate all the instances. And the NVA security just follows very easily. Also, the modification that we propose should not harm the efficiency too much, so the overhead will be very low. We have not tested this, but uh, we're pretty confident. And, uh, oh yes, uh, this is the advantage that we see, and we see that it has exactly the expected form. We have the term which grows linearly with number of decryption queries made with stretch tau c, and we have uh, this ugly term which comes from the construction, but we see that it only depends on global resources. So total number of queries uh, everywhere, the size of the stretch space, but not queries made to the challenge expansion. And what is nice on uh, what we proposed is that it can be applied not only to OCB, but to a bigger class of schemes. So all the schemes which are based on tweakable primitives, which is quite a big uh, class of schemes, some of them are already present in CESAR competition. And uh, it's time to wrap up. So what we did in this work is that we have uh, formalized the security of authenticated nonce-based authenticated encryption with variable stretch. Uh, we have established the relations of our notions with the existing notions so that we have a nice picture of uh, what belongs where and what are the relations. Uh, we have shown that this type of security can be achieved and that, in fact, it can be achieved very efficiently. What we have not shown is uh, how to take any existing nonce-based AE scheme and uh, transform it into a, an NVAE secure scheme in a black box efficient way. So uh, maybe this is uh, possible, maybe not. We have not investigated this problem. And uh, before I conclude, I just want to very quickly say that our lab is looking for postdocs right now. So if you are interested or if you know someone who is interested, just drop us an email. Thank you for your attention. everyone, I have a short announcement. So for the excursion this afternoon, if you want to go with us, then we, go at, we are going to gather.